Okay, uh, good day. Uh, here we're back in processing, and, and today um, we're doing a lecture on translation rotation uh, for, uh, for graphics. And um, this, uh, this can start to get a little confusing, and I, and I don't think the examples in the book are completely clear, but I'm not sure I can do any better, so let's, um, let's, give, it a, let's give it a try. Okay, and now when we talk about translating a, a, a figure, um, in processing, what we mean is that um, we're actually going to change the location of the origin, the zero zero point of a coordinate system. Okay, so let me let me try to explain that here. Um, okay, we might start off when we do a graphic. We start off with this as the zero zero point, and we say, okay, we're going to put the the uh, upper left hand corner for a rectangle to be over two and down two right here, and then we draw a rectangle. Okay, now to translate it to change the position. I mean, we could, in fact, change the location of this point right here. Uh, but to use the translate function in processing, what we do is we actually change the location of this point so that everything that we might have in here then gets moved, which is, which is good, for example, if you're and doing some moving graphics with a complicated shape, you want to move all the components of that shape together at the same time, the same amount. So when we use the translate command, instead of changing these coordinates here, if we wanted to move this thing down here, what we would do is change the origin, move it down here, so this becomes the new zero, zero point, and then when we plot the rectangle with the coordinate, starting coordinate of 2 comma 2, the rectangle actually plots down here like that. So that's, that's what translate does. Okay, let's look at this example right here. Um, right here, this is, uh, this is right out of the book. And I have this sketch here, so we'll run it. And notice that we're starting off here. We have, I've added this background statement, which wasn't in the original, but I've commented it out. I'll uncomment it momentarily. Now we want to translate um, the origin of the coordinate system to whatever the location of the mouse is, mouse x, mouse y. And then we plot our rectangle, where it starts with coordinate 0, 0, and then it's 30 wide and 30 high. Okay, so here we go. I've run it. Now watch as I move the mouse in. We're actually moving the rectangle. So the upper left-hand corner on the rectangle tracks the location of the mouse. Okay, that, that's pretty straightforward, I think. Now notice that we're sort of trailing behind the uh, uh, the the black region that gets kind of erased there uh, as as I move the rectangle. So to keep that from happening, I would add the background statement here in the draw loop. So that first thing that happens each time through the draw loop is it blanks out the background with a gray level, and then I'll hit that. Now as I come in. You see, that's exactly what happens. I don't get the trailing black behind it. The rectangle just tracks the position of the mouse. OK, so that's how that translate works. Now, let's go to the next example. Here, let me, I have that written out here, uh, sketch two. Let me pull this over. OK, sketch two is right down here, multiple translations. We're going to draw two rectangles. What I want to show you here is that when we translate the position of the origin 
That is now the new origin. And the next time we do translate, we do a translate function, we translate with respect to the new origin and not the original origin. Okay, so let's show that. That's what this example is attempting to show. And um, so let me run this thing right here. We're drawing two rectangles. You see that here. This rectangle and this rectangle. And let me begin by just commenting out these translations. Comment that out and that out. And now I will run the sketch and you see that I have a larger rectangle it starts at the origin goes 30-30 then I have a smaller rectangle which also starts at the origin goes 15-15 okay now let me take away and keep this one translation here but I comment this out and run and so it looks the same now, but if I move the mouse in, you'll see that both rectangles track together with the mouse. Okay, now let me take this out. This is a second translation before we, we graph the second rectangle. And so this will now do a translation with respect to this origin in drawing the second rectangle. So as I do that, you see the position of the second rectangle, the smaller one, is shifted with respect to the position of the first rectangle and that uh, by 3510 presumably it's over 35 and down 10. Now as we move the mouse in you'll see that they both move together. Okay so um, this might seem unimportant, I don't know if it right now, but this is exactly the, this, the kind of thing later as you're trying to write a program and you're trying to do translations, all of a sudden things aren't working the way you expect them to work and it's because you're perhaps neglecting the fact that every time you run a translation it's with res respect to whatever you had previously. Okay, but also note that it's the position of the mouse is uh, here uh, each time through. The first translation is always going to locate the position of the mouse. Okay, now, so with that, let me go to the next example. Rotation. Now the rotation, I think, gets even a little bit more confusing. Okay, the rotation function rotates the coordinate system. It has one parameter, which is an angle in radians to rotate. It always rotates relative to the zero, zero point, known as rotating around the origin. And uh, so this then, we ch can change the location of the zero, zero point by doing a translation if we want. And uh, so let me pull in sketch three here. Here's sketch three. Let's look at this. Okay, I have some rotations here that are um, commented out. And th this whole section of code here is commented out. So, but this is going to be pretty much what I have here. Void setup 12120. I set it to 240, 240. Um, And the first thing I'm doing here is drawing a rectangle. Okay. Right after, right in void setup. And uh, let's see what happens there. So here's what I have. I have this rectangle. And the coordinate here is x equal 40, y equal 40. And I draw 40. The width is 40 and the height is 80. So there's the rectangle. Now we said that the rotation always happens with respect to the origin, which is this point right here. Now, so let me do rotate pi divided by 12. It's in radians, recall. 
Now let me rotate that and you see now it's rotated pi divided by 12 pi is 3 let's say that's about a quarter radian thereabouts but this is rotated here right here that's what this example is showing pi over 12 and then here's the rectangle here's the origin so they're showing you exactly how this works it's rotated and this is the positive angle if if in processing if you recall so that's where that angle comes from now if I rotate now this angle turns out the I, I think that was a mistake I don't know I I rotate negative pi over 12 so in this case this whole thing rotates up by uh, pi over 12 so let me comment this out and add this in so there's negative pi over 12 we graph it and indeed what we get you know, sort of looks like this right here so you can imagine this whole thing right here kind of rotating up in this way okay now of course let me just say what happens if I first rotate by pi over 12 and then I rotate right after it by negative pi over 12 you might expect I'll get the effect of no rotation at all and indeed that's what happens so let me just comment one of these out here there now now I have um, this particular I've added a draw loop okay so now what happens with this let me add this up here okay look at this here is um, I think this is this drawing right void draw right in there here's a void setup let me comment this out there so I'm commenting everything out here comment 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 so we just set up our box then we enter the draw loop now I'm doing something here that you haven't seen before because you're used to my doing comments with a double slash but here I do a slash asterisk down here I do an asterisk slash and processing this sets all of the statements in the sketch between this and this are now interpreted as a comment so if I take this out and then I take this out and then I run indeed there's my rectangle now you see that it's reading the X position of the mouse so as I increase the X position it's rotated by an, by an ever-increasing amount so that's what this thing does right here okay now center rotation I don't think this is a great example here because a lot of the important things are actually happening outside the sketch window but uh, let me let me show it to you in any case and uh, I think I'll do sketch 4 here we do sketch 4 pull this over there we go I think this is the same thing void setup 120 120 void draw mouse X divided by 100 rotate and then I have I draw a rectangle okay now what happens when I do okay this is what I had a minute ago okay so there we go okay now now let me do sketch five I think somehow my sketches got misnumbered there okay now let's look at this and um, this one center rotation so remember that the origin always occurs in that upper left hand corner of the window right up here so if I want to rotate around the center of an object what I want to do is make that object the, the center of that object the location of the origin and, and and this is kind of a 
bad example for that, but since it's in the book, I'll, I'll show it to you. So what they do here is they set the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle. First of all, the rectangle is 160 wide and 20 high. And they move the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle to the point negative 80, x equals negative 80, y equals negative 10. That places the geographic center of the rectangle um, at the origin, but that puts also places half the rectangle outside of the drawing sketch region. That's what I don't like about it. So you can see that right here. Okay, right here it starts. This rectangle is continuing over here and up like that. You just don't see it. Now, now as I get in here and I increase the x coordinate of the mouse, the angle of rotation increases and it's right about the point here which is the center of the rectangle. Okay, so that's that. Now, here is where it potentially can get pretty confusing. And, and, and if you find it confusing, I uh, suggest you go in and you individually start playing around with some of these parameter values to help you understand it better. But let me pull in the sketch here. This would be sketch six, first off. Okay, sketch six. I set up my box here. Let me make it 240 by 240. They always draw these boxes too small. And uh, so first thing I'm going to do, I have a draw loop. First thing I'm going to do is translate the origin to the position of the mouse. Then I'm going to rotate an angle. And remember, the rotation angle is always about the position of the origin. So that will be, the rotation angle will always be determined with respect to the location of the mouse. Then I'm drawing a rectangle. Now when I give negative coordinates to the rectangle, they will appear inside the window because I drew the window before I changed the position of the origin. And then as I go through the draw loop, I increment the angle by a tenth of a radian. So here's what happens when I do this. Okay, notice the execution of the draw loop is causing this rectangle to rotate, and it's rotating right around the origin, which is in the upper left-hand corner of the draw window. But as I come in and I put the mouse there, you'll see that indeed the rectangle rotates right around the position of the mouse, which is which becomes the new origin because of this translation operation. So that's pretty straightforward. Now the next thing I think is something you can find confusing. So I try to do it in a couple steps, but I don't know if I'm successful. Let's try it here. Okay, and this is going to be where we're going to do rotation first and then translation. So I have a couple of individual things here. I set up the box. I set an angle to be pi divided by 8. And if you recall, pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So pi over 8 is 22 and a half degrees. So the rotation angle is 22 and a half degrees. And um, so I rotate that angle. First I rotate. So first I'm rotating the angle. And, and then after I rotate the angle, I'm going to translate the position to 3030. And then I draw the rectangle. Okay. Then down here, I redefine the angle to be zero. When I do that, I set angle equal to angle minus angle. So no matter what we set this to up here, the new angle is zero. But I've already rotated by angle. So now when I rotate by angle again, I'm just rotating by zero. 
so there's no additional rotation but this rotation stays in effect and then I'm drawing uh, then I'm translating the origin now to 6060 and now I'm drawing a rectangle so I'm drawing two rectangles and they both should be rotated by the same same angle but put in a different translation positions let's see this and there this is what I have here so this is pi over 8 uh, is the angle it's, it's been rotated first then translated and then rotated by a, a zero angle and then translated again to another position so as I said my suggestion here is if you're starting to get confused by this to go in and play with some of these numbers and see what happens and hopefully you can do that enough times to clear this up for yourself now the last thing I'm going to do here is present this example in the book which carries this example here to an extreme to some extent okay so here is a sketch and first off I'm setting up my box I have a draw loop I rotate the angle and then I'm going to translate after I rotate it I'm moving the rectangle to the new mouse position mouse X mouse Y then I'm drawing a rectangle now I'm going to change the angle by one tenth of a radian and then I'm rotating again here okay and uh, so let's see how ha what happens here with this notice up here let me just set this originally I'll set it to be zero but it really doesn't make any difference because uh, as soon as this thing starts you're gonna see a rotating rectangle okay so let's see what happens with this so there we are we have a rotating rectangle now and it keeps rotating now notice that as I go through the loop, the draw loop, rotates the angle, translates to the mouse position, which here is zero, zero until I put the mouse in the box, draws a rectangle or half of the rectangle here, the center of the rectangle is outside the box, it's up here somewhere. Okay, now let's see what happens in this case. As I pull this thing in, Look at that. So it's rotated. The rotation is fixed. Or is it? I mean, what's going on here with this thing as I move this thing around? Okay, so this is something for you to think about in this particular example. So I think that, that will end my... Um, my video for this topic.